What's up Photoshop fam? Today we're going to be talking about Camera Raw, the Raw Editor and Raw Files. Why you should be shooting in them and how to edit them once you do shoot in them. Stick around. What's up Photoshop fam? I'm Rick Navarro and this is the Pixel Laundry Photoshop Academy. Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of the Pixel Laundry Photoshop Academy 101 class. Today we're going to be talking about raw files. What is raw? What does it mean? Why is there an advantage to using it? Um, how can I be using it better? So on and so forth. So uh, raw is basically a file format that comes out of the back of your camera where it is uncompressed. Whereas in a normal situation you might be, in most situations, you're probably shooting JPEG. And JPEG is a type of uh, digital or computer compression that is put on your images to save them in file size. Now the trade-off for file size is camera quality or color quality I should say. So you'll get a smaller file but in order to compensate for that smaller file size they have to make it up somewhere so basically what they're doing is taking away from the image quality. Now your raw images are going to be the most uncompressed raw or untouched file uh, that a camera can give you. Now depending on the type of camera that you're using, um, your camera may give you a higher quality or, um, or depending on the type of sensor that you have in your camera, uh, it may give you a more fuller range of colors uh, in your image. Even though the images right out the back of the camera don't necessarily look the richest. They're going to give you the richest histogram or color spectrum in order for you to make your manipulations in Photoshop with. So um, let's talk about that a little bit more. So this right here, this image right here looks like uh, it looks like a camera, a Canon camera. This is what I have shot with the most in my career. Um, but somewhere in your camera's menu settings, regardless of whether you're shooting on manual or you're shooting um, in some other um, um, shooting mode, uh, the type of cam uh, the type of image that you're capturing, um, there should be an option in order to select that type of image inside of your camera's menu sets. So you'll probably want to navigate from your camera's menu into um, like a file format sub menu and then in there you should get an option that looks something like or very similar to this. And what this is 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 these are different types of JPEGs. You've got large, medium, small, and as you can see, um, there are like low grade large, low grade medium, and low grade small. And that's the difference between like this smooth edge and this jagged edge. And then you've also got these options here where they're gonna shoot a, a raw image as well as maybe a high res large JPEG and so on and so forth. You know, raw plus medium, raw plus small, raw plus low res large, raw plus low res medium and so on. So um, this is how you would get this out of your camera. I pulled this little diagram up for you guys. You can take a screenshot of it uh, if you want or um, I may make it available down in the show notes below. But this is basically a quick little visual guide for you to understand kind of the main differences between RAWs and JPEGs. Like I said, your RAW files are uncompressed and they're unprocessed whereas your, JPEG, your JPEGs are processed inside of the camera and that's going to give you a compressed smaller file size. Um, your raw files have to be edited in post which is what we're learning how to do today and your uh, and your JPEGs can be, they don't necessarily have to. Um, your raw files are going to be large or huge in size compared to your JPEGs. Your JPEGs are going to be relatively small. Your JPEGs are going to be relatively small. Typically professionals are using your raw and even, even if you're you know, a prosumer or you're an amateur, I recommend you start using RAW because it's going to give you a richer range of colors and it's going to give you more latitude in your edit in Photoshop. But there is a place for JPEGs as well. Anything for web, actually JPEG is usually the format that I like to end on. Like if we're going to start, let's start at the highest quality and save that original file never changing its origin but always export from that file to smaller outputs like a JPEG. For example, my company does a lot of stuff with fashion companies so in certain instances we'll get the highest resolution image from them which is more than likely going to be a raw file or a TIFF or a PSD but most likely going to be a raw. From there once the work is done and they're compressed if we know that the end usage is going to be for something like the web there's no sense in putting 
24, 50, 80 meg files up on a website, that would kill your website, especially if you had a large gallery of them. So in that particular case, when we know the end usage is going to be for mobile, um, then we're going to compress those images down and save them as a JPEG so that you're getting the maximum amount of file space for file transfer, for bandwidth, for mobile, for anything online. So that's where we would use a JPEG over a RAW. Now, a situation where we might use a RAW over a JPEG would be, like I said, if we're processing those images in a very high capacity with a lot of high fidelity, we need as much color information as possible. And the place you need that the most is in print. So when you're working in print, you want to stay as close to that RAW, more than likely going to be uh, a TIFF file, but a TIFF that has been exported from the RAW. And the TIFF is also a type of compression, but it's a very, uh, a very large compression that retains a lot of color detail and when you're converting from digital to print you are going to want as much color information as you can possibly get so that those colors remain rich and saturated for your print process so this is a CR2 there are several different types of raw images uh, NEF, DNG, CR2, uh, ORF these are all different raw files that happen to be native to different camera systems the CR2 happens to be native to Canon the NEF is Nikon uh, Olympus has an ORF, uh, DNG is kind of a bit of a, a, a misnomer. I've, I've found different systems that use DNG, but DNG basically just down, stands for digital negative and uh, Camera Raw with the latest Adobe updates, I believe opens them all. Usually if there's a new file format that's been released on the market that um, Canon ha or excuse me, that Adobe hasn't got a driver or something for, they're usually updating the, 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 the camera raw as well as Photoshop in general relatively quickly in order for you to um, be able to access those files. But at this point, there really isn't too many uh, camera raw files, at least that I know of and at least that I've used them in a professional capacity that camera raw can't handle or can't open or that doesn't open soon thereafter its release. Obviously in this day and age, everything moves very quickly. So, you know, you kind of got to give them a little bit of time. But here is what a raw, uh, a raw file looks like when it's opened up in your Adobe Camera Raw. And I kind of like to look at the Camera Raw as the edit before the edit. And this is going to give me all of my preliminary opportunities to make uh, maybe global adjustments or local adjustments um, on, on a more macro kind of scale. And let's go through some of those right now. For the most part, if you're shooting flat or if you're shooting an image in a raw file and the exposure is correct, your image is going to tend to be a pinch flat. Um, in this image, it's a little bit saturated, but some of the some of the skin tones are, are out of, uh, you know, maybe out of where I would want them to be. They're a little hot in some areas and a little oversaturated in, in, in the reds and in the yellow channel. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But for the most part, sometimes they end up looking a little gray. So let me kind of show you an example of that. Here's a good example. This is from a shoot I did some time ago. And it almost looks like there's like a haze over it. And, you know, you could look at that and say, oh, that picture, you know, it hasn't been exposed properly. Well, has it? That's the question, right? And this is where the power of the raw editor really comes in. What you really want to look at is not necessarily the visual, because again, your monitor may be giving you information or influencing the color. Um, that may be true of a mobile device. That may be true of even the back of your camera. First off, never trust the color in the back of your camera from that little visual display that's on the back. You should never be looking at, at that for color accuracy.